guys welcome back to my channel today I'm going to do a freshman year survival guide video and before I get started make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below and like this video if you like it and let's get started the first thing I'm going to talk about is prioritizing your health so there's a few things that I think are really important before you start your freshman year and the first thing is to find a good doctor and I say this because I had a terrible experience finding a good doctor in College Station and switched hospitals a lot of times and it was just a mess. So if you have a pre-existing condition or you're just trying to find somebody that you can regularly see and trust, I recommend just looking at reviews at least for different places that you can go in case something happens and writing down that phone number or having that address on your fridge or wherever you want to put it just so that you know where to go in case you do have an emergency. The second thing about health that I recommend is to have a good first aid kit on you. So not just having like band-aids and gauze and that kind of stuff, but also having things like Benadryl on you or ibuprofen or whatever because you will use those or your friends may need them and just having it in case you need it is so nice because if you have to study for a test, you don't want something like your allergies bothering you, things like that. So make sure you have a good first aid kit on you. The third thing I recommend is making sure that you're able to get a good eight hours of sleep. And I know that's super cliche to say and eight hours is a standard, but if you can make your classes in like a block, like have all your classes in the morning or all your classes in the afternoon, or as condensed as possible so that you can create a good study time, a good social time so that you're able to go to sleep at night, it will help you function so much better in your schoolwork and just be a happier person. And you really need that sleep. So try to get your schedule to the point where you can block off all the time that you need and block off enough time to go to sleep at night. And the last part about health that I wanted to talk about is prioritizing your mental health. And that can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, but I would recommend not over committing yourself to people or organizations or school. And just remembering that you're a human being and you need to take care of your physical health and your mental health in order to conquer all of your responsibilities and make all of your dreams come true. So make sure that you're prioritizing your mental health and that if something is worsening your mental health, that you address that and correct it or get the help or medication that you need to improve that so that you're able to do all the things that you want to do. Going off of that, the second thing I want to talk about is your academics. So um, I just want to remind everybody that their grades their freshman year are super important. And I know grades don't define everything that you are, but your freshman year grades are the grades that you're gonna start your entire college experience with. And if you have dual credit, those are the grades that you're gonna start with or whatever it is that you have. Your GPA is gonna change drastically by the classes you take your freshman year. So make sure that you're remembering that when you're taking your classes and still prioritizing academics, especially once you get out of that senioritis slump, like you gotta hit the ball running or hit the ground running that's the saying you gotta hit the ground running when you get to college because you want all of those grades to reflect the type of student and future employee that you are especially because a lot of people try to get internships and things like that after their freshman and sophomore years so you just want to make sure you have a good start and if you don't have a good start that's okay you're gonna bounce back but you did dig yourself into a little hole so it's just gonna be extra work going on out. So make sure you remember that going through your freshman year. The second thing I wanna talk about in academics is going to office hours. And I'm pretty bad about going to office hours, I'm not gonna lie, but I found that a few things have really helped and one of them is emailing your professor in advance so that you could schedule a good time. That way it's really awkward if you don't show up. So it kind of makes you hold yourself accountable. And then the second thing is bringing friends with you or if you have like a lab partner or whatever your major is, if you have somebody in your class who has similar questions, going with them could help make the conversation with your professor a lot less awkward and uncomfortable so that you can both get your questions answered and both feel nervous and anxious together. The third thing I want to talk about is making friends in your classes. So the reason I say this is because some of the people in your classes are going to be people that you have in your college experience either for the rest of your class or for the rest of your four years. And so having somebody that you can study with is so helpful. It also helps you keep yourself organized and hold each other accountable. If one of you forgets to do something, you can kind of remind each other 
Um, I have a really good friend that I take a lot of classes with. Shout out to you, Mariana. If you're watching this, I love you. We take all of our classes together. Well, not every single class, but most of our classes together. And it just helps to have somebody who you can complain to, you can survive with, and you can celebrate with once you get through it. So that's really helpful. Um, and also just making group chats with other people that you meet in your class so that you guys can all ask questions together. Or if one of you talks to the professor, you can send that to one another and it just helps keep everything organized. But one thing I want to point out is a lot of people make those group chats to cheat and that is not the move in college. If you go to A&M, that is against the Aggie honor code. And if you go anywhere else, that's against all of your honor codes. So make sure that you're not using those chats to cheat because you really don't want to ruin the rest of your college experience or potentially getting to graduate over something like cheating on a small ex assignment or cheating on an exam or whatever. It's not worth it. Just fail the class and take it again if you really have to. It's not worth cheating. The last tip that I recommend in academics is to make good reviews throughout the semester because most of your final exams will be cumulative and if they're not, you may end up using that material that you've made reviews with for later exams. Like for example, I'm pre-nursing, so anytime I took anatomy notes or chemistry notes or biology notes, I tried to keep all of those organized. I personally use Google Drive. Um, a lot of people use a lot of different things, so do whatever works for you, but try to keep it organized because I had to pull materials that I used for those and study those again, again when I took my T's exam. And if you're also pre-nursing, I made a T's exam video. You can click the I button at the top and click on that video if you're interested in learning more about the T's. But yeah, that helped me so much. I also keep all of my materials for everything on my Google Drive. That's how I organize my life. And sometimes I even have friends that are like taking a class that I've taken in the past and they're like, hey, what'd you do for your nutrition project or whatever? And I'm able to click on my sophomore year, click on the semester and pull out that project for them and show them kind of how I did my project. So keeping all that stuff is really helpful and you can get rid of it once you graduate, but until you graduate, I recommend trying to keep all of that organized and together because it will really help you save money on buying reviews in the future and also just save time when you're preparing for your final exams. The third thing I wanted to talk about is your financials and being in college can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people in regards to financials. Some people are fully funded by their parents and they get allowance from their parents. Some people, their parents are paying for some of their college, not all of it. Some people are going off of scholarships. Some people are coming from so many different backgrounds but everyone is still trying to figure out their budgeting plans and how they're going to make ends meet in college. So the first tip that I have in the financials is to make sure that you're taking advantage of any student discount opportunities that you can. A lot of food places will have certain meals that are the like student meal. Um, so if you have any places in your area that have that, definitely take advantage of those. You can also make an account with unidays.com and I'll put that link down in the description. So if you scroll down, you can pull that up and make an account. But if you're a student, it's totally free and they'll post a bunch of different opportunities for student discounts that you can take advantage of. The second tip I have with financials is consider going to a community college for the first year or two or however long you need. Um, I made a whole video on community college, so if you are interested in learning more about that, you can click on the I in the top left, or no, it's in the top right, I lied, top right. Um, you can click on that and pull that video up, but I went to a community college for three semesters and it helped me save a lot of money and there were so many other benefits that came with it. So if you are struggling to afford your tuition, a community college, you're taking the exact same classes as people at your four-year universities. So definitely take advantage of that. You will save probably more than half of your tuition every semester by doing that. And you can put all of that money towards the rest of your future. The third thing I wanted to talk about in this category is taking advantage of scholarships. And I know in high school, people are applying for scholarships and you may have gotten a scholarship when you got admitted to your school or you may not have, but so many people forget to apply for scholarships after their freshman year. So either transfer scholarships or sophomore year scholarships, junior and senior year scholarships. Um, it's a lot easier to get those ones because people forget. So I didn't get any scholarships when I went into my freshman year of college, 
but then I applied for some and actually got some finally, so I definitely recommend taking advantage of scholarship opportunities. There are lots of scholarship opportunities that you can take advantage of that don't require a bunch of essays and don't require too much effort, so make sure that you're applying for whatever you can and hopefully you can get some scholarships after your freshman year. The last tip in the financials category that I want to talk about is getting a job. I know a lot of college freshmen don't like to get jobs because they're already stressed going into their first year of college and it can be kind of intimidating to get a job, but I came to college with a job and it honestly helped me time manage so, so much and I do not regret at all getting a job my freshman year, so I recommend doing it. Um, personally, I found a lot of help getting jobs in student housing because I was kind of struggling to deal with my rent, my room and board kind of thing. So I actually found a job my freshman and sophomore year that completely covered my room and board and it was being a community assistant at an off-campus dorm. And if you want more information on that, comment that down below and I'll answer your questions. And also if you want me to post a video on my experience doing that, I definitely will. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you would be interested in. Um, so yeah, student housing, you definitely can get so much help and I currently am an RA on campus at Texas A&M and we do get rent discounts and some other perks that come with it. So I will also be making videos this next semester during my last semester at A&M and I'll post some RA videos for you guys. But if you guys have any questions about those perks or my experience doing it, comment down below and let me know because I would love to make a video about my experience in student housing. Another way to get a good job is just getting a job on campus in general. Um, I have a lot of friends that work on campus and in their experience, campus jobs are just better at understanding that you're a student and you're able to make that job work with your class schedule and sometimes even your organizations. So if you're looking for a job and you want your employer to really respect your academic work and whatever you're involved in, um, getting a job on campus is a really good idea and it's also a really fun way to work with other people your age so that you can make friends. And the last part about getting a job I wanted to talk about is getting a side hustle. So if you're somebody who um, is really busy but you need a little bit of extra income on the side, it would be a really good idea to get a job with something like Favor or Postmates or um, I'm a check tutor, I also am a shipped grocery deliverer. So those are good jobs if you just need like 20 bucks on the weekend or whatever. Um, so a lot of their, those kinds of companies have independent contracts so you can work when you want to work or work as many hours or as little hours as you want to work. So those are definitely good ideas. Or if you love making videos, maybe YouTube could be your side hustle. Maybe YouTube will be my side hustle. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button, you guys, and help a girl out. The next thing that I think is very important to talk about is your social life and your organization involvement. So the first thing I wanna mention is you should not overdo your organizations. So, so many freshmen are like, oh, I wanna join um, orientation camp and I want to join an academic organization and a service organization and a fraternity slash sorority and a religious group and doing that will really 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 stress you out because you will not be able to make friends unless you're able to commit your time to something because it can be really frustrating when there's somebody who's really flaky or overly committed and they're not able to spend time with you so just choose something you're really passionate about so I recommend picking a fun organization or something of like interest and then picking something that will help your applications for jobs in your future or your resume or whatever it is you're working towards. So for me, I'm involved in two organizations on campus. The first one is Camp Kesson at Texas A&M. That one you can join at any university, so if that's something you're interested, comment down below. Or if you're from Kesson, comment down below. I would love to meet you. But Camp Kesem is an organization where we put on camps for children whose parents have cancer. And that's kind of been like my, um, I guess, fun organization, even though it is a service organization. Um, but yeah, so that's something that I personally found that I was passionate about and I joined that organization. But my second organization is Future Aggie Nurses, where I'm currently the vice president. And I find that that one definitely helps my application because I just applied to nursing school and I'm hearing back from them soon. And all of the work that I've done with Future Aggie Nurses has really helped me prepare my application to the best 
of my possible self can do. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, but that organization has really helped shape my career as a future Aggie nurse. And if you want more videos on my nursing channel, you can check those out. Um, I have 10 tips for pre-nursing students, and I also vlogged every single nursing school tour, so you guys can click on my channel, make sure you subscribe because I'll be posting a lot more of those and you can watch all of those videos I've posted. The next thing I want to talk about is that it's okay to try new things. So if you came to college with a bunch of your high school friends, that is great, but make sure that you're doing something that you want to do. So don't all rush the same sorority just because one of your friends really loves I'm not in a sorority, so I'm just going to say sororities. I have nothing against any sorority that I'm going to say. But say your friend just loves Tri-Delta and really wants to be a Tri-Delta, and you, you really want to be a Kayo. You go rush Kayo because you're, it's your future, it's your life, and I don't want to sound negative because this isn't supposed to be a negative thing, but you may not stay best friends with your high school friends. So make sure you're doing something that you really care about and you really enjoy because college is all about new beginnings and why not try something that you really love. The last thing I want to mention while talking about social life and organizations is to make sure you're making time for yourself and self-care in general. It's okay to tell your friends that you can't go out if you are stressed out or you just need a break or you just wanna do a face mask and go to sleep. Whatever it is, um, you really do need to take care of yourself and prioritize yourself because you are not going to enjoy something if you're just constantly stressed. Or going to a party may not be fun if you're thinking about your chemistry test the next day and how you're going to fail it and just things like that. So make sure that you're really prioritizing yourself while you are learning to integrate yourself into this new social life in college. The last thing that I think is really important to talk about in your freshman year is your relationships. And I'm talking about relationships with significant others and relationships with your friends. The first thing I wanna talk about is it is okay to have a boyfriend going into college. I know a lot of people gave me some, I don't wanna say like shade or whatever, but they were like, do you really wanna to go to college with a boyfriend? And I just, I, I'm still dating said boyfriend and he's watching me film this video right now, but it's okay to have a boyfriend going into college. Just make sure that you're also taking care of yourself and taking care of your needs and taking care of each other because it is totally possible to have a boyfriend, but if things change and it doesn't work out, it's also okay to break up with said boyfriend and do what you need to do, but don't feel like you have to or you don't have to go to college with a boyfriend because high school relationships can last. Um, I'm not saying they always do, but they can last. So don't let people try to talk you out of that if that's something that you think is important in your life. So the next thing that I want to mention is that in college, you're going to kind of learn a little bit more about yourself and the way that you view things. And you may become more passionate about things that may not have mattered as much to you in the past. And that's okay. Um, just know that sometimes that's going to change certain relationships in your life. So like, for example, um, politics can become increasingly popular to discuss in college and your opinion on things may change when you get to college and that can clash with some people that you really care about. Um, also just your opinions on the school life and academics. Sometimes you have a lot of friends in high school that you just kind of had around in your life for fun or they were in your organization with you and then you get to college and your priorities change. Just know that a lot of these may come up as conflicts and that it's important to understand yourself and to stand your ground when it comes to those things because ultimately you are becoming the adult that you are meant to become and it's going to shape your future and your career and your family choices and most of your life decisions. So just be open-minded and know that it's okay to have different opinions and be respectful, but also make sure that like you're prioritizing yourself and if there's somebody in your life or something in your life that is no longer working with your opinions and with something that you hold value to that you're letting go of those things and doing things that you are passionate about and that you value and that align with your beliefs. And then the very last thing I wanted to talk about, and I think this is probably the most important thing to um, 
spread, I guess, is um, knowing that you need to respect yourself and that you should demand that same respect from other people in your life. And I mention this because in college you could or you could not um, attend college parties or get involved with certain people. Um, and I think that there's a big stereotype when it comes to college that it's just big time to party and hook up and do whatever. And if that's something you want to do, then, you know, go for it, take care of yourself, use protection, all of the above. But if that's something that is not important to you and you really want to stay away from it, know that saying no is okay and you should be around people who can respect your no. So if you go to a party and everyone's asking you to drink and you say no and that's not okay with them, those are people you don't want to hang out with and you should not be hanging out with and you need to make the decision not to be around. And same goes the other way. If people are constantly judging you for your life decisions um, and telling you that you should or should not be doing certain things, like take their take their opinions and listen to them if, they're, if, if they mean something to you. Um, but if they don't and it's just becoming a clashing opinion, it's time to just let go of those people because you need to do what makes you happy and what makes you respected and what you respect yourself. So letting go of those people and making sure you are treating yourself kindly is really important. Okay, so that is it for today's video. If you have any questions for me, please comment them down below and I would love to answer your questions. I hope this helped you going into your freshman year of college and if you need any more help or advice, please comment that down below as well. If you liked this video, hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel down below. I post videos every Wednesday at noon and during the summer will be every Wednesday at noon and Sunday at noon. So I will see you guys this Sunday at noon Central Standard Time. Thanks for watching.